Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to be overanalyzing a simple question in AW2 using significantly more math and graphs than are strictly necessary. So a pretty typical video on this channel then. Now it's well established that fishing is good on hybrid or water maps in Dark Age. And if one player or team is fish booming and the other side isn't, the side with fishing is heavily favored in a vacuum. Yes, you need to pay for a dock and pay for fishing ships up front, but you have to think of it like a second town center. Normally, you're capped to 1TC and can only make a new villager every 25 seconds, but docks give you a second economic production building to grow your population. This isn't even considered a very long-term play, but more to supercharge your economy in the short term with a bit of upfront investment. You'd be hard-pressed to find anyone who said fishing early is not worth it, and in fact it's standard on Nomad for example to always build a dock with one villager right from the start, unless you're Hans, or you run out of wood for a town center, and was I'm sure part of the thinking for why Hans got to start Nomad with a scouting horse now. It's considered that large of a disadvantage that they can't immediately dock. Now contrast all that positivity with feudal trade carts on land maps or feudal trade cogs on water, which on the flip side are generally considered a sign someone has no idea what they're doing online and is a brand new player. Making either unit before Imperial Age is a pretty big faux pas online, and even in my own experience, if I see an allies trade cart rolling through my town in feudal or even castle age, I'm polite about it, but deep down I have to admit my expectations about that teammate's contribution to the war effort drops precipitously. I might even preemptively begin building up the humanitarian relief fund I know is going to have to go their way when their town is overrun and they're trying to rebuild behind my base. It's uncanny how a single trade cart early on can make all those thoughts go through my head, as I'm sure happens for other players as well. Yet on the surface, isn't this the same idea as fishing? At least the thought behind it seems to follow the same logic, where you're building up your economic population bypassing the one town center bottleneck. Now I'm not looking to rock the boat or put the cart before the horse and claim I'm about to revolutionize opinions on early game trade. In fact, I'm going to assume conventional wisdom is correct and that fishing is great and early trading is as bad as everyone assumes. What I want to look at is the why. We'll approach this by looking at the initial investment of each, the speed and magnitude of their payoff, as well as discuss the other factors to consider to hopefully explain why these two approaches to the early game, while seemingly trying to do the same thing, have such a wildly different perception from the wider fan base. Now one thing I want to set aside right from the start is I'd suggest this is not fully explained by a difference in valuing food versus gold. If you have a market in feudal, you can easily turn gold into food anyway, so I don't find that a satisfying explanation that holds up. It's the same thing for the idea that fishing is good because you can start it in Dark Age, whereas trading has to wait until feudal. Again, it's not a satisfying answer, as I don't think everyone would pile into trade cogs or trade carts if they were available in Dark Age. Even for fishing ships, players dock uncontested lakes on the Four Lakes map in Feudal Age all the time for example, which generally wouldn't be criticized. So while these might be a convenient explanation and are minor factors, I don't think they get at the core of why these things are so different, which has a much better mathematically based argument as it turns out. To start things off here, we have to consider the upfront cost of all three. For fishing, the dock costs 150 wood plus 75 wood for each fishing ship. In contrast, while markets start similar in cost to docks, trade units cost 100 wood and 50 gold each, so double the total resources. Immediately, that's a big strike against them in the early game, but is only one piece of the puzzle. Now let's consider the resources that each unit can generate. This depends a bit on distance, and for fishing ships, a nearby deep sea fishing spot can bring in nearly 30 food per minute, while a distant one drops to more like 18. Shore fish is then even worse, at just 16 food per minute in this setup, and generally you should avoid those as much as possible. If you think about how this plays out as well, generally you take from the nearby deep sea fish first, meaning you get that great collection rate at the start, but it tends to fall off over the next 10 or 12 minutes as your ships are forced further away. Contrast that with trade income, which at least in the long run increases non-linearly with farther trade lines getting you more gold over time. For all these tests, we'll be using a Team Island 2v2 map, though a 4v4 or land map wouldn't really change any of these conclusions. Trade carts and cogs generate the same gold with equal trading distances, though ships move a bit faster, so they technically get a little more gold over time. In this case, as one example, the trade cart brought back 51 gold in a little over 4 minutes, giving us 12 gold per minute, and the trade cog was closer to 15 gold per minute for the same length. 
It's not looking promising for trade at this point, but now let's add in a new wrinkle of when those resources come in and think about the inherent startup time of fishing compared to trade. We'll assume a dock and market are already up and consider in all three cases how long it takes between starting to build some units and when they can reasonably pay back, keeping in mind that trade carts are particularly slow to create at 51 seconds each and is why many players build multiple markets in Imperial Age when they try to ramp up trade. To test all this out, I created four units at each building and followed their respective incomes for 12 minutes, which should give us a sense of how quickly each ramp up your economy. And here's what we get. At the bottom, we have the in-game time after queuing up four of each type of unit, and on the y-axis, we have how many total resources were dropped off into the stockpile by that point. While a line graph is maybe not technically the best choice here, as it suggests the resources are coming in continually, I think it makes it a bit easier to read. Notice that fishing is greatly outperforming trade, with a massive starting delay in trade income. Of course, trade units need to complete a full journey before you get any sort of benefit, whereas the first fishing ship fills up and drops off a handful of food in just a couple of minutes. As bad as this looks though, what if I told you this is greatly inflating the value of trade, making it look better than it really is, despite not looking great here to begin with. One thing this chart hides is that trade units cost twice as much as fishing ships in total resources, with 150 versus 75 cost per unit. If we correct for the upfront cost of four fishing ships and four of each trade unit, you can see trade not only starts in a bit more of a hole with 600 resources spent on four units, but after 12 minutes, neither trade carts nor cogs have even recovered their initial investment yet, though trade cogs are admittedly getting pretty close. In contrast, four fishing ships have repaid their 300 wood cost after just five minutes. Suddenly, trade cards look downright terrible, and it appears trade does not jumpstart your economy in feudal. Remember, this is without caravan, since that isn't unlocked until castle age, so don't sour on trade in the late game here, we're just looking at feudal age here specifically. In fairness though, this is maybe now inflating the value of fishing ships by a convenient endpoint. After those 12 minutes, the nearby fishing spots were running on fumes, so you need to move your fishing ships and make a new dock or put them on fish traps at that point. I probably don't have to draw attention to that fact, but I don't want accusations of being paid by the fishing industry here to push pro-fishing propaganda. There's certainly less of an argument for fish moving forward than this implies, but that also fits with the standard perception that fishing is largely for an early game boost with a quick payoff for your growing economy. Now, I went in expecting fishing to be clearly better, but I didn't even think it would be quite this dramatic, and it's easy to see why early trade has the reputation it does. We could stop here, but for me the big elephant in the room is the lack of caravan in feudal age. To that point though, there is one interesting case worth discussing that you may have already thought of, which is Burgundians do have that tech in feudal age, and it even comes with a discount. I'll be generous and ignore its research time and cost for our purposes here to put it in its best possible light. Throwing in that faster movement speed, repeating the test as Burgundians with their feudal age caravan tech, this is what we now get. Amazingly, trade cogs at least appear to be catching up to fishing ships in value by 10 minutes, with almost 100 more resources collected in total by the end of the test, which might have even been a bit higher with a longer route, as those give more gold over time. Remember, fishing is also running out of steam at this point, while trade is now in full swing, and trade carts aren't even that far behind. This is looking pretty solid, and maybe caravan saves the day. That is, until again we consider the cost of those units and the much lower starting point of trade. Suddenly, trade cards look like they're still barely breaking even at 12 minutes, and trade cogs are again lagging behind fishing by over 200 resources. But let's try one more thing, and see if there's any possible way to ever justify feudal trade if you have the perfect allies and team bonuses. Obviously, our best shot is with a Burgundian player getting caravan early, but now let's throw in a Spanish ally. They increase the amount of gold from trade by 25% as a team bonus. We'll then throw in Bohemians, making the team's markets work 80% faster, meaning they'll work 80% faster at creating those trade cards, speeding up that initial time it takes for us to get up and running for a quicker payback. Third, we'll add in a Bengali teammate, whose team bonus gives us 10% of our gold collected from trade and food, so we can add those resources onto the pile as well, which combined with Spanish gives us about 37% more income than usual from trade. If this doesn't work, all hope for feudal trade is officially dead, as this is as much as I can possibly stack things. So let's see the results of this super team. It turns out, once we factor in the cost of trade carts, even ignoring the cost of caravan, it still wasn't enough for trade to match fishing, and took nearly 9 minutes to break even in this particular test. 
while a longer trade route along the entire diagonal of a map would net more gold over time. If anything, that might even make the initial payback slightly longer, depending on how the numbers line up, as those first and second trips take longer to complete. Again, this is just an experiment to see if even in the most convoluted, trade-friendly setup possible, we could make feudal trade carts work, and it's just not happening. Especially without Caravan though, not only is trade lagging in total income, but there's that huge delay between building the trade carts and then waiting for them to make their full trips, which are the major factors I'd point to in why this strategy has such a stigma. Now just to touch on a few other factors here, this is not the only argument against early trade. Walling in trade is incredibly expensive and time consuming, and not a reasonable thing to do on most maps in Feudal or even Castle Age. Even if the payback on resources was comparable to fishing, it would still be a sketchy idea anyway, given you have to protect a huge amount of the map to keep trade units alive. Second, I know I waved off the argument before, but we can at least acknowledge fishing in Dark Age helps you shift villagers onto wood, where villagers collect faster anyway and keeps you off farms for longer. In a way, the earlier comparisons are too kind on trade, as food is slower to generate and worth more than gold in the early game from a villager time perspective, and further reinforces the results we already saw. A third side factor here is of course opportunity cost. For the 150 resources per trade unit, there's just way better things to spend those resources on. Basically, all ecotechs at that point in the game have a faster than 10 minute payback and make for a better investment, while feudal trade is also going to slow your castle time and additional town centers. Now, long term things flip and trade of course becomes your only source of endless gold besides relics, so this isn't an argument against late game trade that you do in Imperial Age to be clear. Caravan plus the increasing value of gold shifts that conversation. For an overall conclusion though, as assumed from the start, an argument for early trade just isn't there despite reasonable effort. As I said, the point wasn't to question that conventional wisdom, but instead just demonstrate why with some concrete numbers and graphs. Big thanks to James, Jared2142, Jockster, Justin, Samantha, Stephen, Woodruff, and corporate sponsor OpMain, as well as everyone else on Patreon for their amazing support. You may have noticed none of them made feudal trade cards yesterday, and that's because they got access to this video one day early. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.